Yesterday evening, I went out for a walk and uh, went down to the local church to pray the rosary. And there just happened to be the evening mass, you know, the Sunday obligation mass that's offered on a Saturday evening. For those who say are guardas or nurses that have to work on a Sunday, that was the intention of this mass. But it's become like I'm too not bothered going to mass on a Sunday. So the, the few that did go on a Saturday were there which is fine. I mean, I'm not making, I'm not going to make a, a problem about it. But I walked into the back of St. Muradoc's Cathedral. Still no holy water there, by the way. Walked into the back of St. Muradoc's Cathedral and we're just going to sit down and kneel down and pray the rosary. And there was music playing over the speakers. There was this low level music playing over them. I said, what is going on here? It was low enough to that I couldn't, I mean, I'm very sensitive to audio. It was low enough I couldn't, I couldn't sit there because the priest was saying the mass and then there was this low level music over uh, the speakers and um, I, 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 I just left um, I, I left outside and I was talking to a few a few men that I know that go to the traditional Latin mass. They were they had prayed the rosary. Uh, they weren't going to that mass either. And I said to them, I said, Look, something very strange going on in the cathedral. And I said, yeah, well, there's been strange stuff going on in that cathedral for years. The lights flashing on and off and they have new lights in that cathedral. Lights flashing on and off. The, the clock is never right on the cathedral. It's always out. Uh, it never says the right time. Maybe it needs to be, um, maybe the clock needs to be uh, uh, fixed. And needless to say, there is the 2012 tragedy there. I'm not going to talk about it in this video. So there's a whole series of stuff about this diocese and especially that cathedral. And I said, okay. So I went back in and I said, I said to somebody um, at the door, do you, do you hear that music? Yeah, yeah. Some people have started leaving that they, they just couldn't take it. And I suppose it was a sign for me, like I just couldn't stand, I, I actually couldn't, I actually couldn't pray in that chapel. I couldn't pray with that type of music. And I, and I thought for a moment that maybe it was because one of the local pubs was playing music very high. And it was, in, instead of it coming through the speakers, maybe it was a pub locally that was playing, I don't know, that had a, a band on or something. So I walked around the cathedral thinking that the music was coming from outside instead of inside, but it was actually inside over the speakers. Now it was like this repetitive same melody over and over and over and over again. It was kind of really annoying and it was drowning out what the the, bish, the priest was trying to do, which is offer the sacrifice of the mass. The, 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 the easiest thing for that priest to have done would have been to gone into the sacristy and turned off the microphone, turned off the speakers. You can still say the mass. People might strain to hear you, but it's the sacrifice of the mass. And at least you're trying to offer it reverently. But he went through the whole mass with that music going through the speaker. Anyway, why am I talking about this strange coincidence yesterday? I suppose because it got me thinking about what is going on in Ireland. I suppose the Holy Spirit is working. They said, Christ will speak to me in his church. When Christ asked me to renew the Eucharist, he didn't ask me to do somersaults around the church and stuff and crazy stuff. The inspiration that I got when I was called to renew the Eucharist in 2016 was to do something very simple, which was kneel and receive our Lord in the in the Eucharist on my tongue just to kneel to give that sign of reverence and receive our Lord in the Eucharist on my tongue the same way that I received communion from Saint John Paul II in the Vatican where uh, who I served mass for and what do you, if people <laughs> will find this interesting but when I said when I remember saying to our Lord I said that's very easy and he smiled he actually smiled. He didn't say anything. He just smiled. I said, <laughs> I said, like, OK, you're not asking me for anything strange or exciting here. And it's and then when I was trying to discern in my own mind, is this something I should do or not? I mean, it's age old teaching of the it's an age old practice of the Catholic Church. I mean, if 
if it was good enough for John Paul II to, to, to foster, to encourage, sure, what could be wrong with it? So even if I'm mad, sure, what, what harm could come from me kneeling and receiving our Lord on the tongue? And I made a vow that I would only ever receive the Eucharist in that way. I mean, and there was nothing controversial. There's nothing, nothing controversial, nothing problematic back in 2016, 2017, 2000. Nothing, nothing controversial or problematic. I mean, I, I might seem a bit odd because I'm practically the only person doing it in the church uh, while everybody goes up with their hands out, but that's fine. That's okay. So, uh, you know, that kind of drove me to go to Hansville, Alabama. It dro- it, it helped me, sp- me spiritually a lot. It drove me back to confession a lot. Uh, I used to confess a lot more because if you want to, you can't really renew the Eucharist if you're not in a good state of grace all the time. And if you're not fighting to be in a state of grace all the time when you receive our Lord. Um, and it, ta- it drove me back a lot more to prayer. You know, to 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 kind of study up in prayer, think about prayer, uh, the stages of prayer, study the mass and so forth. And uh, I kind of look back now and I and I look at that smile of Christ thinking there was a lot more. He there was a lot more in that smile. It was like, uh, you, you'll understand someday kind of smile. You'll understand, you'll understand. And and I de- indeed I do, I do understand now. I do understand <laughs> why he smiled because uh, I never thought in all of my life, never thought after going through formation in Rome and never thought all of my life, in my whole life that I would see what I've seen today done to the sacrifice of the Mass, to the Eucharist. Um, recently in Cork, the Dominicans have been banned, it seems. It's hard to, to understand why you would do this. The Dominicans have been banned from saying the traditional Dominican rite in their novitiate in Cork um, by the Bishop of Cork. This this seems to... I mean, and I know what... I'm not going to give criticism to the Dominicans themselves because, you know, what options do they have? If they said no they'd probably be ordered to leave Cork. So, look, they'll just be nice Dominicans and obey the bishop and do what they're told. That's okay. Um, the, the sad reality is that Mass, that Dominican Rite Mass, is the best vocational promotion you could have done for your order in Ireland. There is nothing better, nothing greater than you could have done as a vocational promotion, as a as a vocational anything, is the best vocational promotion you did for your order in Ireland. And I don't think the bishop understands this. Um, nobody could accuse the Dominicans of Ireland of being extreme in one way or the other. They've maintained their habit. They've maintained their identity. They were offering the traditional Dominican rite. They were also offering the Novus Ordo reverently. Nobody could could accuse the Irish Dominicans of being extreme in one way or the other. They were very. Le- they are very level headed in a way. Now you're, they'll get their criticism, but they were offering Catholics the full patrimony of the Catholic faith. They were giving us a rounded formation in a way, in saying, okay, look, don't go, you know, trying to draw people to the church. Now, I do take exception, heavily take exception with them obeying bishops and and not giving communion, kneeling on the tongue to those of us who wanted it. I mean, the best way of responding to that would be to not give communion at all instead of desecrating the Eucharist for those of us who have made it an act of consecration to only receive our Lord kneeling on the tongue. I do take exception. Obedience has limits and no bishop can order you to desecrate the Eucharist. Um, but that's, they'll have to answer towards God. I can't, you know, I can't get involved there. Um, but it's, it's very, very, very sad in the Irish church 
that bishops do not understand the the importance of bringing the church together instead of casting us of casting traditional catholics out you know and what can what do catholics have to do what do traditional catholics have to do in cork now you have to go to our lady of the rosary you have to go to the society of saint Bice the 10th for mass there is no other option you know this craziness in the church will pass and bishops will see they've tried to destroy the traditional Latin Mass, traditional rite, for the last 50 years. And the only reason it's still alive is because laity have continued to go to it. Laity is the laity that has, that has funded these chapels. These chapels wouldn't have been bought if the laity hadn't bought them. That chapel in Cork, the Church of Ireland, the chapel in... in, in at Lone Church of Ireland, the chapel in uh, Limerick, sold by the Jesuits, was going to be turned into a nightclub, bought by the laity. You know, it's the laity that has funded these chapels. And you need to go to the Society St. Pius X in Cork if you want to save what is the most precious in the Catholic Church. I mean... In this synodal document, there has been nothing about prayer, about leading, about fostering prayer, renewal of prayer, a true understanding of what prayer is. The traditional Latin Mass draws you into three key elements of prayer. It draws you into the, the, the discursive element of prayer. It draws you into the contemplative element of prayer. And it draws you into the unitive element of prayer. Now, St. Teresa had, in her interior castle, she'll, she expands out in this a lot more. And, and these three elements of prayer or the, the spiritual life of prayer isn't like, oh, um, oh, like a chapter in a book. I do this and then I move to the next chapter. There's not like a clear line, but it's like, it's like a road of prayer. It's like, it's like, it's like being, it's like, it's actually like physically walking up to Calvary. It's physically walking up to Calvary. So you're physically drawing, being drawn near step by step up to Calvary. Discursive, you have the Gospels, the, you have, sorry, the, the, the readings, you have a, sometimes you have a homily, you have the contemplation of our Lord being offered as a sacrifice on the altar, the, the re-representation of the sacrifice of Calvary, and you have the unity with Christ in the Eucharist. The unity with Christ. And I've spoken about this before. How you give communion in traditional Latin Mass is completely different to the Novus Ordo. Completely. Black and white. One is completely different. Because it's like you have to kneel down in a traditional Latin Mass. But you're lined up. So the, 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 the person that is moving is the priest up and down. Okay, so he's moving up and down, giving you communion. You're kneeling there. And as the priest draws near to you, you close your eyes, you open your mouth and you receive communion. You don't have to say amen because the priest says that for you. Your amen doesn't make the Eucharist the Eucharist. It's already the body, blood, soul and divinity of the second person, the Holy Trinity. This is already something that it's already there. You know, and the priest is blessing you with the Eucharist. He's giving you the Eucharist. It is a totally different way of contem- of uniting yourself with Christ. I mean, it's just, it just lend, it, it's just your soul is just led into that unitive state of prayer with Christ. It, it's been completely fostered. It's completely, it's just the whole dynamic of that Mass is is walking you to Calvary. It's the whole spiritual life of prayer. It's the highest form of prayer in the church. It's far superior to the Novus Order because if you go up to Novus Order in the Novus Order and you want to receive communion kneeling on the tongue, you can't do the same way. Even in Hansville, Alabama, which they've they have the altar rails and they're giving communion the same way. You're still being, okay, you're looking at the priest. When's the priest arriving? And now when do I need to say amen? You know, the whole prayer is broken. And these men that designed the Novus Ordo in the 1960s, did they have a strong life of unit of prayer? None of them have been made saints that, that, that did the actual work. 
I mean, priests don't may don't understand this because they're 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 offering the sacrifice to the mass at the altar. They're not us laity us laity that are going to the two masses because I'm going to the two masses. You can see how how your prayer life completely differs and changes depending on the mass you go to. It just does. It just one lends itself to the to leading you in to that ultimate end of unit of prayer with Christ. Where instead of praying, you're just living in that beautiful conversation with Christ. And it's kind of a strange experience to, to try and convey to people in this video. Um, but like I just want to I would just ask those who know better about the spiritual life, who know better about prayer, who know better about grace, who know better how Christ works in, its, in your soul when you're purifying yourself, when you're entering into, into prayer better. You know, I'm not a theologian. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to meditate on what is happening in my soul when I go to the different masses, because I go to the different masses. You know, I will go to the different masses. And, and I'm trying to examine how is the action of grace in my soul afterwards when I receive communion in both of them. I mean, it's the same Christ. Christ is working in his church. He hasn't abandoned us. I'm sure he's raising up saints in the Novus Order. And I'm sure there are people far, far holier than me that go to the Novus Order. Far, far. I mean, I struggle with all of this. And my friends know this. I struggle with my spiritual life all my life. But I kind of see a glimpse of Christ and I, and I said, no, I'd, I'd like to know you more. And, and at the end of the day, he did call me to renew the Eucharist. He didn't call me to renew the traditional Latin Mass. He never said anything about the traditional Latin Mass to me. So I don't know. I can't give you an answer. I can't tell you what, what does heaven think about all of this. I can only tell you that the, that the Eucharist is the body, blood, soul and divinity of our Lord, which is age old. The dogma of the church there is so i'm not adding or subtracting to what the church is teaching but i just think we could foster prayer better i mean silence is critical critical if you want to have a good spiritual life in prayer silence is key and this is you can find this in the orthodox church they talk about this all the time you know we don't need to reinvent the wheel. And we have destroyed the silence in traditional Latin Mass. I mean, we have absolutely destroyed. I mean, in, 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 can you imagine in the Novus Order, you're, you're, you're trying to explain to people the three, that this is the highest form of prayer in the church. And we end it with clapping and, gosh, we're all great. We're here today. Like, I do wonder, what, what's the point of the Mass? You know, we've become Protestant in the way we offer our worship now. Because that's what Protestants do. You know, you have to arrive to Calvary to touch our Lord. To touch our Lord and to contemplate him. And there's a lot to be said about the traditional Latin Mass. It's far superior. They're not the same Masses. Not that the way graces are working, and it's my, from my experience. Because one fosters a unit of state of prayer far better than the other. You know, you need time to talk to somebody. It's if if I if I'm having a conversation with them and I'm having it for there, ah, how are you? Great to see you and sure it's great and all this and sure we will talk soon and sure keep give me a call sometimes and sure and and you know I give them 30 seconds of my attention. Well that person's not going to feel um you know much loved or cared for or something like that if i say to somebody now let's go over and sit on this bench and i look at them and i give them my, myself 100 percent attention there's no distractions there's no uh, there's nothing going around and i can listen to them and talk to them and have a conversation that person is going to feel that i've given my heart to them in a sense that i've given my 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 but mind my heart my will my myself my everything is given into that conversation with the other person without all the distractions it's the same in prayer it's the same in prayer and you'll never grow in prayer if you don't have silence you'll never grow in prayer if you don't foster those three steps of prayer which discursive contemplative unitive or 
it's like a path, you know, you can expand out of it. St. Teresa does it, you know, she talks about you know, the Carmelite spirituality would expand, will expand out more on that, on that process. But I mean, they'll talk about contemplation. They'll talk about um, silence to be able to have that conversation happening. And we had all of these elements in our traditional Latin mass. And this is where I, I feel sad in a way that the Dominicans aren't able to stand up and voice the importance of all of this because they know this better. They, I mean, what I wouldn't give to have the time, the resources, the energy, everything at your disposal to actually foster prayer more, to talk about prayer, to lead people into to that unity of state of prayer, to allow us to be, you know, purified and, and helped of our problems. I mean, Christ's grace actually works. It actually does. When you say, when you have a problem and you say, look, I can't resolve this problem Christ I can't and we, we stop relying on our own will and give our will to Christ and say I can't do this but you can Christ is powerful he is powerful he works so like I, I do recommend I do recommend sadly I recommend Catholics in Cork if you love the faith if you want to defend the faith you have to support the highest form of prayer in the church which is the mass against the willful destruction of the sacred. The willful destruction of the Eucharist, which has happened. I mean, I'm, during this pandemic, I've been, I've, there's times when I've received communion with uh, hand sanitizer alcohol on the host. Hand sanitizer alcohol on the host. You know, so the host has been desecrated by priests hand sanitizer alcohol and it's not the first one or first. this is a couple of times even in one traditional latin mass i saw hand sanitizer alcohol on the hands of the priest after every host he was given out it's happened and we don't think we don't think do we have the right to desecrate do we have the right to add to the body of our lord jesus christ the mission of the church is to prepare you for heaven. That's what the body of our Lord is meant to help you with. We're not meant for this world. And yet we seem convinced, convinced that this is our only finality, the way that we are treating uh, Catholics over the last two years. We're, we've made them so afraid. We've made bishops and priests in Ireland have made ca some Catholics so afraid they haven't returned to Mass. They're elderly now that haven't and will not return to Mass. They'll watch it on TV. They are so afraid. That's what the church has done. Um, so, look, uh, I, it's just a word of encouragement to, to young Catholics around Ireland. You know, it's, I mean, there are, I know there are good priests in Ireland that say the Novus Order. Sincerely believe, sincerely believe um. And, and are obedient to the bishops. And they think that, that this, this will support their, their priesthood and their mission. But there is, a, there is such a thing as true obedience in the church. And when bishops are destroying faith in the Eucharist, which they have done, when the bishops, their policies and their decisions actively destroy faith in the Eucharist, actively do not foster prayer and unity with Christ in the Eucharist. Act, their actions don't lead people to an increased love and knowledge of the Eucharist. When bishops and priests do this, they are not being obedient. They are leading souls away from Christ. You know, when you don't treat the Eucharist with re respect, you are leading souls away from Christ. There are limits to obedience. And I say this as somebody who was a legion of Christ for nine years. I should know this. There are limits to obedience in the church. And when a bishop tells you, no, you cannot give communion uh, to anyone kneeling on the tongue, the appropriate response from a priest would be to say, that's okay then I won't give communion. 
at all. At all. There's no need to. That's what some traditional communities have done. They stood their ground. They didn't disobey the, the bishop. And yet we seem to be rushing now to destroy the sacred in the church. You know, it's not just communion. It's how you offer the sacrifice, the mass. It's how you're leading souls to prayer. It's the, it's the confessions you are offering before mass. Stop with the guitars at mass. Stop, you know, offer the sacrifice, the mass reverently. Lead souls to the Eucharist. Lead souls. Make the Mass about Christ, not about yourselves. We, we do not need a performance at Mass anymore. You do not need to make it a crowd pleaser every Sunday. So this innovation or that innovation. You do not need to get people up to do this, that and the other. I, I tell you, if you made the Mass about Christ, you will get people at Mass. You know, so there was a lady that she called me yesterday. And she'll know her name. She's a great grandmother. And she lives here in the diocese of Kalala. And she goes to the traditional Latin Mass. And, and I was saying to her, sometimes I feel I'm mad. And she was saying, no, Robert, you're not mad. <laughs> it can't be wrong to renew the Eucharist. To renew respect for the Eucharist. It cannot be wrong. Anyway, pray for the church. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.